So, three months on the road, 10,500 kilometers. I'm gonna use my trusty old Sharpie here, mark it down on the map, and I'm gonna take you for the ride. Is what 10,000 kilometers in three months looks like. And funny fact, we spent two months out of that three in South Australia. But I'm excited to see what the next three months brings up because that's going to be pretty cool. Our first QA, Dale. All right, so here we are. Um, this video was just going to be Q&A and then after the Q&A is budget for the month. So um, hopefully you enjoy this one. Yep. Um, it's obviously not a vlog, but anyway, we'll see. A thousand subscribers. Yes. We've got a monetized YouTube channel now, thanks to all you guys. Um, yes. <laughs> so <laughs> you don't even make your money until you get yeah. to hundred dollars first so we'll let you know when we get to that because i don't we're not even rolling in a dollar yet we're not even rolling in cents no, so don't get too excited yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right but in case you didn't realize we're in there's a big rock am i holding it on the camera like people do no anyway we're in uluru uluru yep so <clears throat> just so Ooh, it's a boy people no, in case you didn't already, we delay our content. So, um, as an example, today is the 1st of April. We're in Uluru right now. Yep. But you will not see the video for Uluru on YouTube until the 23rd of April. So, it's three weeks behind. There we are. Look at that. But you'll probably start seeing it on Facebook and Instagram in maybe like three to five days or something. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. So... Yep that's how we work it it's just so i have time to make the videos but also um we upload weekly so we did flinders and Uden data in like a week so i'm not going to have a video for that's two videos in there see so um it changes like sometimes we're up to date sometimes we're not but we always do delay at least a few days on the socials it's just for safety reasons yeah. not because we think anyone wants to stalk us or anything it's just you know just so people don't know where you are exactly at the time that's all everyone should be doing it and most people will be i think they you do. just don't realize they are that's right that's right um all right so i do have my notes over here because we have questions from everybody they've put through some questions so do you want to start with questions first or yeah let's go yeah? let's go right. through questions let's start yeah. at the top and work our way down we've actually had i think we've got We've got a couple. Say, 10 and, questions, I think. Yeah. And then, then we've, we've added a little bit to them. No, well, we haven't added to them. We, we're we adding like our top tips and things, like things that things we've, that we've really found good to tell you about. Yeah. Um, okay. So first question we got from Five in the Wild. How are you both coping? Do you want to go first? Well, I just go first for every question. Yeah, you go first for every question. Then I'll, because <laughs> okay. I tend to waffle on a little bit. She will just give me a clip behind okay. the ear and... Hey girl, say hello to everybody. Hi. I'm just trying not to block the mountain. That's alright. That's okay. Um, okay, so I am on and off. Some days I'm fine, some days I'm not at all. Like I have had quite a few days where I've been so miserable and I've wanted to go home. Um, what that's caused by, who knows. 
if you're a traveler you'll understand that the feelings are just intense but um, for me personally I do need structure quite a lot I'm very organized if you know me personally I'm so organized it's actually an issue um, so not having locked in dates and especially the biggest one for me is not having the end date locked in that is actually messing with me quite a bit um, so and I also stress a lot about money so I think into the future probably too far um, I always have and yeah I think I'm I stress a lot knowing what we're planning to do in the future I want to keep the money so anyway that's for me I'm, I'm fine like the last couple of days I've coped perfectly but yeah I'm on and off yeah your turn <laughs> all right so don't get me wrong I love the whole traveling thing um, I miss work I'd never thought I'd say that in my life, but man, I just miss working. I miss the money coming in because it all it's all just going out. Um, yeah, that is a really thing, like an intense feeling or a, something really odd to understand the feeling if you just have money coming out and not going in. That's right. Like it's crazy, isn't it? It's just like being defeated every day. Like you're just constantly, it's just... You, 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 Even though we're choosing to do this, I know we're choosing to do this and stuff like that. But and it just, should be fun. The it things is. that we've dealt with the last couple of days or the last couple of months with ongoing cost of stuff is a bit annoying. But um, I don't know if it's a thing we're traveling, but getting the three month itch, you know, like we've been doing this for three months now, do I still enjoy it? 100%. But um, we've got a block of land that we're starting to have conversations about a building, a shed, and doing all that sort of stuff. And that is wanting to make mm. me go home yeah because sure. i'm getting a big shed built and all that sort of stuff so yeah. yeah but still love it just i don't know miss home and the routine a little bit i guess we made a boo-boo didn't we oh, would you say boo-boo we um picked the best spot for a sunset to film our um, video because we thought oh that'd be cool turns out that um Everybody else likes that spot for a sunset. <laughs> so we, we watch the sunset. We're going to relocate to the van and um, we'll be over actually. We finished off question one. Yes. So apologies. Apologies about that. New scenery. I think this is better anyway, just between you and me. Is it? Okay. <laughs> so next question came from Caravanning Down Under. What have you packed and haven't needed and vice versa? Here we go. So my things so the things we haven't needed but we did pack the boat fucking <laughs> boat eh? technically we haven't really needed it like we, no, we, we could have definitely we didn't need a boat we could have definitely lasted without has it been great having a boat you bet your sweet bippy anyway that was just a joke but um definitely for me personally like female type of thing blow dryer and straightening iron i have not done anything other than this with my hair for three oh, months either. did you pack those yeah yeah right i also we use the uh, sorry sorry we use the blow dryer oh, to defrost the freezer true i take that back the blow dryer is handy um and the other thing we haven't used at all is the chainsaw and the axe we have not had one fire in three months no we've had two we have. one we put out because it was so firstly there's been a fire ban mostly um, sorry just give me two seconds secondly we really don't i think mainly as well because um the sun goes down so dark where we've been by the time you want a fire going we're ready for bed hey um yeah i i, I do agree with that um the chainsaw has just created a mess in the chainsaw bag because there's two, there's bloody bar oil everywhere. Mm, that um, was the only thing on your list. So haven't needed the chainsaw just yet. I'm gonna say no, just I know. yet. Yeah, we may need it. Because I think so I don't know what the fire ban is in WA, but hopefully we can have a couple of fires moving forward from here. Yeah. Was there so anything else? Things that we have needed that we haven't packed. Oh, yeah. Winter clothes. So. When we were leaving and we had to remove weight from the van, Tristan's like, you don't need your winter clothes, get rid of them. So I literally left myself with no winter clothes and what did we need the whole time? Winter clothes. How have um, you coped? 
I've coped, but there we are. Like, you think it's going to be stinking hot all the time, it's actually not. Um, another biggie moisturizer and lip balms. Oh. Like, we are so dry, our lips crack every few days, like, you get dry up like an old prune. Far out. I never moisturized in my life, have no, I? No, I, I don't really. Either. And I reckon I put about 10 litres of moisturizer into my body. It's ridiculous. And I'm still nastier than the nasties. Like our skin has literally turned into like a crocodile or something. Yeah. Is it a crocodile or a scaly fish? Yeah, like a fish out of water, like a dead fish. Yeah, but not moist. <laughs> Your have needed things. All right, have needed solar bank. You need a solar blanket. I don't care anyone says you need a solar blanket. Yeah. Agreed up. We have needed it. We use it to maintain the battery in the in the car when we're not moving anywhere. Because we have our fridge going. Oh, we we actually have it as a fridge and freezer, so it's always it's always sort of run, cycling. But when what we have noticed is just by plug, plugging the um, solar blanket into the van, it's. Um, just giving us that boost on the batteries in the van. Yeah, it does. It, what it does, it sort of um, it negates the power that the fridge uses because we've got a compressor fridge. So when you've got the solar blanket plugged into it, it's only a small one. It sort of is like not having a compressor fridge, if that makes sense. But, um, that was it. Oh, no. And pretty much every electric um, tool that I've got. So I've got a half-inch rail gun, I've got a drill, I've got an impact driver, and I've got the blower. I've used every single one of those tools since we've left. Mm. We've helped people change tyres. I'm always doing up screws everywhere. It's so much easy, easier using an impact driver. And we use the drill every day to put the legs up and down on the van. So, yeah. All right, next question from Kel. How much do you miss Brian's shoulders, Mel? How much do you miss Brian's shoulders? <sighs> I definitely miss Brian's shoulders. <laughs> um, but all jokes aside, like we definitely miss our friends a lot. Hundred yeah. percent, especially now being Easter. Yeah. We because we always are with our friends at Easter time, like, and it's sort of you don't really feel the holiday and the public holiday when you're traveling full time, but they're all away doing their own thing now, and yeah, I don't know. It's, we miss our friends. Yeah, I didn't think it would hit me so much. Um, I'm not a very what's the word sentimental, sentimental person, yeah. but yeah, I'm definitely missing. People. 100%. Um, from a question from Salute Oz, is the boat staying? Bard, what do you think? Of course, the boat's it's staying. It's staying because what are we going to do? Just get rid of it? Like, unless you want to buy it. Bard, no, it, it, it'll stay to do WA, of course, and then we'll get probably get We'll rid drop of it off in Victoria for you on the way home if you want it. That's a good idea. All right, boat loader, outboard, outboard loader, and the boat. It's yours if you want it on the way home. Mm. Send us a DM. Slide into my DMs, Barge. He probably will now. Um, <laughs> okay. Questions. There's two questions from the Tilsleys. Hey, guys. What is your favourite and least favourite part about being on the road? So, my favourite thing about being on the road is just... I really just wanted to see what every town looked like. Mm. Like, I'd only lived in one town in North Brisbane my whole life. I don't, you didn't travel any more than what, 16 Ks as a kid, did you? We, we did one <laughs> holiday to the Whit Sundays, but you know, like I just wanted to see what each state, the differences were and what each town looks like. And it's crazy. Like they are so South different. South Australia, what we have noticed is so much different to like every other state so far. Like the others, others sort of sort of blend into each other, but South Australia is very different. Yeah, in, I, their, I in guess, their smaller towns. Yeah, I guess they sort of do blend. Yeah, along the east coast there. Yeah. Um, my least favorite thing about being on the road is not having the luxury of endless water. That's a big one for me. Mm. Um, and a couch, like oh, like a recliner. How good would that be? Yeah. All right, Dar, what's your answers? Um, my favourite thing, again, same as Mel, seeing all the new places. Um, yeah, like, I enjoy just interacting with different people and hearing people about people's lives and stuff like that and how they got to where they are doing what they're doing and stuff like that. But It is good meeting new people. Too. Yeah, it just why are they travelling or 
what do they do? Cool, all that sort of stuff. I, I, I enjoy that. Um, so yeah, new people, new faces, new places, just the, probably the, the normal stuff that comes with traveling that I, I really still do enjoy. Um, my least favorite, I love my car and I love my van. And every day it breaks my heart when I walk out and I find a new dent or a new scratch, it drives me up, up the wazoo. Like, I hate it. But, unfortunately, what? Nothing. Unfortunately, it's just, it's the nature of the beast. That's all right. You know? Um, like, we don't intentionally trash our stuff. No. Just driving. It gets worn out. Yeah. It, it you know, wears it down. And then he's so big on doing things like the Udna Data Track and the Gib that it's, he's choosing to technically trash the gear more than needed. It's, I'm, I'm just saying the truth. It's all fit for purpose. Like it's built to do what it's doing. But I like keeping everything nice and tidy and clean. And you just you just can't do that. Like the car has the car had a really good wash before we left the York, and now it's just putrid. Yeah. We keep the inside clean though. Like we clean the inside every week. Like it's we, really refreshing getting into a clean car. Yeah. I think if you're living like in the car yeah. half the time, you want it to be like at home where it's nice. Yeah, and like clean all the dash is always wiped down, it's all treated, or like yeah. everything's always and clean inside the car. Every time we stop, I sweep and mop the floor in the van. Yeah. And that's multiple. The mop's great. We, we actually got the mop given to us from the. Um, the Hide Five. The Hide Five. Thanks, guys, because she loves it. I love it. It's great. Okay. Um, One thing we change about our setup. Oh, this is still a Tildesley's, yeah. And that's from our Tildesley's again. So, for me, van wise, obviously I'd love more water, um, but that's not possible. Like, no, that's right. Unless we got a truck or something, you just can't have more water. Um, I'd also, if you're building a van, definitely go like all white interior because it just feels so fresh and airy. Yeah, ours is and quite and dark. And lighter floors. Um, oh, you could still have dark floors. It's the white cabinetry. Yeah. We have like the dark, bluey sort of color, and it's just it's just not as bright and airy as I'd like. We didn't so choose those just, colors either because that was this was a stock. No, brand, that's so. right. So they're just tiny things, but really, I probably wouldn't change anything. Like we both agree we would prefer to go smaller we yep. want a smaller van yep. but that's not happening because we're not changing our van we're doing our lap in this that's it <laughs> yeah so you've stolen a couple of my dot points thanks for that the smaller van yeah that was a both thing so my dream or dream so smaller van i think around the 20 foot mark would be a great idea mm. i've got a layout in my head that would be a game changer in the industry. I'm using game changer because I think it would be. Um, but yeah, that's that'd be one thing I'd change. Yeah. Cut two foot off the van, um, reduce the weight of the van. We could probably carry another water tank. We can carry more water, kill two birds with one stone. Mm. Um, but the other thing is I love the patrol and I think what it's missing is a canopy on the back. So I would love to chop it extend it and put a canopy on the back well, i think that would be the ultimate tour of them again not These happening things aren't happening yeah Don't maybe in, maybe in 10 years time when we go to think about buying a new car i'll put 60 grand in this and i'll cut it then but that'd be okay. my two <laughs> two things to happen pipe down Lindsay. righto righto all right here so, she comes next question from the colliers ways to save we're not the people to be like asking. literally my answer on here is ha ha because we don't clearly, if you've watched any of our budgets. We try. Yeah, we, we try, but we're not ones to give budget tips. Um, but our little things that we do do. Which we, which we do know saves money. Yeah, but a biggie, we buy all our meat in like butcher packs from yep. the butcher. And this is just us. We have two adults, one kid. Our, we can get a butcher pack ninety dollars worth and it lasts us three weeks yeah so that, that's Easily. a big saver um and the uh, can i just add to that yeah there's we don't cook bacon and eggs every day either no. like we we, cereal every ha day. we have a bowl of cereal every day i can't remember the last time i cooked bacon on the barbecue no. we used to have it all the time like every time we, we went away camping but yeah. not now we like, can't think of anything worse 
Oh, I don't mind a bit of bacon, but I do feel better for having cereal. That's for sure. Yeah. Crunchy nut, baby. Um, if you have a dog and you're traveling, 100% invest in some good clippers if they need clipping, of course. Yeah. Um, because that's going to save you an absolute ton of money. Or just don't buy a sheep. Or don't get it. First thing, don't get a dog. But also get a dog because then you can't do anything and it'll save you money. Um, Not in this instance, instance though, because we're at Uluru, where we've got to, we're palming well, off for two days and it's going to cost us 200 bucks. Well, that's what I mean. Don't get a dog, save you there, but then get a dog, you can't go to the shops and stuff. Yeah, that's right. Um, if you are a coffee drinker, get a machine, because if you're buying coffees, holy moly. Yeah, so I, I could not imagine buying. My coffee would cost nearly 10 bucks, I reckon. Um, what a really? Yeah, because I get ludicrous. almond milk, that's an extra dollar. I would like some syrup. That's an extra dollar. <laughs> so I, Just, I, I don't get the coffee thing. I've never drank coffee. No. I hate coffee. So us, we would save money there, but say you're both a coffee drinker, get your machine. Yeah. Just get a machine. Just spend, if it's $500 on a machine, just do it, especially if you're drinking nut milk and bloody syrup. You know what I mean? <laughs> and the only other thing is like low cost camping, but then we're not really doing that well in that aspect. Um, all right, let's keep moving along. How off? Oh, question Justin. from Justin. How do Justin you is our South Australia connoisseur. He's given us so many pointers on how to get around here and what to check yes. out. So thanks, Justin. How do you find schooling on the road, like fitting it in with exploring? <sighs> it is tough. It's tough. I'm not going to lie. The work is so easy. Like, she's great too. Um, but getting her to focus is like pulling teeth. She thinks this is a holiday. So yeah. getting her to just do 10 minutes of writing is impossible some days. That's right. Um, so, you know, I always try and just be a week ahead so then we can have those days off. Um, if we're doing something like... Tomorrow. Tomorrow we're riding around Uluru. Uluru. She's clearly not going to be doing any school work. Um, it is school holidays. It is school holidays. But I'm saying as an example. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's... You just have to try and be routine, as in get it done. We had a travelling family. They do all of their work on a Monday, and then they don't do anything for the week. Like, yeah. they just smash it all on a Monday. And they had two, or two kids. Um, we so might I'm try going that to try that now this term and see yeah. how that goes. See, see if we can make. So yeah, you just I, make I it do work. physical education every day, so we spend an hour every day doing PE, don't we? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Yeah, if you didn't pick that up, he doesn't. Um, okay, next question. Oh, from Sasha. Sasha. Hi, Sasha. Sasha. She said no question, but she is from our hometown and she's been following along which that's not our hometown. We were staying at my mum's house. But I'm pretty so, sure yeah. you drive a Y62. I'm pretty sure I know what color it is, so. Did you do some stalking? No, no, because I I, just, I, think I, rem I think I know who you are. If that is you, let us know. But if it's not, let us know too, because that'd be good to know, because yeah. I remember that car too. Anyway, um, explore more repeat. Where was home and where would you move to based on your travels so far? Okay, so home was in a suburb called Elimba, um, north of Brisbane. Yeah. Uh, we had a one acre property. It was cool. We loved it. Um, we've sold all that. We don't own that, own that anymore. Yeah. So that's our where we lived. Um, yeah, North Brisbane was home. All for, our family live in North Brisbane. Yeah. In the vicinity there. Um, but based have, on our travels. Well, we oh, have already chosen our next home. Yes, we have a home. We have land somewhere. It's in the north coast region of Queensland. Um, so we're only a few hours away from where our friends and family live um, because I didn't want to be too far away that I couldn't drive back and visit. Yeah, so correct. that's where that's come from. Um, but based on our travels, South Australia, it's incredible, honestly. Like you have everything from your fingertips in South Australia. You're a tiny little bit away from all the best beaches ever, which we haven't been to WA, but they're amazing. Then a couple hours this way, you're in the full blown outback. Like it's just crazy. Yeah. South Australia is incredible. I did love um, Beechworth and I did love Tumut. Yeah, they were cool too. 
I did love like the is that the snowy mountains? I don't know. Yes. It Chuma. was? Yeah, Chuma was like the snowy mountains region. Oh. I reckon that place in the winter would be superb, but I don't do the cold. But um so far I, I have loved the York Peninsula. Like I could live on the York. No, no way. No, I see I could. No, I, I can't deal with the sandy, dirty texture. Oh yeah, true. Actually <laughs> hang on. Hang on. No, nah, back to Chuma. If, if I was gonna live anywhere so far that we've traveled, Chuma. Anyway. But yeah. Um Okay, so we're down to questions that they're all the questions from you peeps out there. Thanks for the interaction. It's been great and it's it's good to have the conversation. Oh, we have had a few people asking what programs we use for YouTube. So I'll just quickly run through. We use Movavi to edit the videos. I use Canva to do thumbnails. And then for music now we've just changed to Epidemic. Um because as we mentioned earlier we're monetized now which means we can't have copyrights on our stuff and a lot of our previous youtube videos have been They're copyrighted, all copyrighted. Yeah. so um unfortunately we which are we probably know. paying we're probably outlaying more than we're going to be getting in but whatever that's just how life is isn't it yeah but as i said once we we will we're very honest we'll let you know when we make money and how much it is so you yeah. can know the first five cents you guys will know yeah um okay so we're just Let's gonna talk about do the band. yeah quick little rundown of the band so we have previously had dramas with the band we got off to a rough start but we've realized now that's it's not just nothing us. to no no of course it's not just us but that's got nothing to do with the actual brand no the the, the brand because the, yeah yeah now that we've done the udna data and the tracks we've been on recently, not one thing moved. No. Oh, there's a few screws that come loose. But that's gonna happen. You know, like we, we didn't have the fridge break. We didn't have our microwave break. We didn't, no. nothing. Like when I say nothing has broken on the van, I yeah. mean nothing has broken on the van. Yeah. We got like the tiniest bit of dust in right at the corner of the front door. Like it's honestly has proven itself now. Yeah. I the have things, full trust in the van, yeah. The issues we were having with the van was not the product. It and was poor the, workmanship. It was the workmanship. Yep. Yep. Um, which we know now from when we got those things fixed. It was how they assembled, which wasn't even to do with vacation. Yeah. So we just wanted to say, like, how, you know, happy we have been with the van. Yeah. Um, I would buy another vacation tomorrow, and I encourage everybody else to, like, the, the brand, like, this van and the brand is spot on like it's built to do what it's said to do yeah so um did you want to just touch on oh yeah now thing? we're saying that like the van's great Every, everything like the van the car everything's great but you need to be prepared to be grabbing a screwdriver oh. grabbing a spanner Yes. Getting your back dirty to crawl under the van or the car just to double yeah. check everything always you need to be prepared to do that because like the yeah. first day doing the unit data track, the brand new exhaust only fell off the car. No yeah. fault of the exhaust whatsoever, just the corrugations were that bad that the two rear um, tailpipe bolts had come loose and the rear tailpipe yeah. nearly fell off it. So yeah. again, I'm under there, just banged them up with a rattle gun, they were fine. Yeah. Did a walk around to the van at the end of the unit data track, there was a million screws, all had just wound themselves yeah, out. Exactly. You just gotta you gotta you have to Be check. maintaining. You need you need to know the van. You need to be able to walk around it, know exactly where that is, what that does, how that works and tighten it all up. You have to be able to do that. Yeah. It's not just, you, you don't don't let it go, you have to do it. Yeah, because other van, well, otherwise, will go wrong. your van's gonna fall apart on you and you're not gonna know why. That's right. Okay? All right, so just a couple of like tips from us. Like we'll get to the things, pointy end already. Things that we have found really useful or things we think anyone starting this or whatever should do yeah um so let's just go through the list so 100 percent defrost your freezer every month religiously yeah 100 percent. you have to like depending what fridge you've got but ice builds up even behind and you don't even know it's there and you have chunks like the whole way every fridge is probably to, different yeah but we got a vitrofigo uh, fridge every single month defrost your freezer yeah it will make your life a lot 
easier. And do it before you do your groceries. Don't do it after you get your groceries. Yeah. Um, definitely invest in a cryovac machine. Yeah. So you pack all your meat and your, you know, your sucky bag things because you won't fit everything in there. And two days in, your meat will go frostbite. Yeah. In a normal bag, hundred percent. And you it's did the something um, about these freezers. And you do that spaghetti bolognese, and you can put you can put like spaghetti bolognese in it and freezing like little flat yeah, packs. Yeah. It's just you need a cryovac. Yeah. Um. Something I have definitely realized if it's a really hot day and we're going to be off grid, so no aircon, I travel with the blinds like up so it's dark inside. Yeah, close the van. It right makes up. a huge difference for heat when you get to your location. Yeah, yep. 100%. Um, if you have kids, get them a little handheld UHF. It just, it's much nicer knowing if they're just popping for a ride or something. She doesn't go too far from the van, no way, like, you don't let her, but if she's off playing with friends at like the couple of caravans down, we go, hey, where are you? Yeah. And she always replies and she knows the rules with that. So yeah. the UHF is great. Um, we have found with the toilet, you know those toilet smellies that hang over your bowl? They really do work a treat. Yeah, you have to have it. Like it's stopped. Look, the van does get pongy. It does. It does. And I find having that in there, it sort of just yeah. covers that smell it a little just, bit. It makes a difference. You know? Um, a couple of things in your... Um, oh yeah, so a good air compressor. Like, you need a good air compressor that, this is in my opinion, you need a compressor that's hard mounted, that is just simply an on-off switch that you don't have to worry about pulling out of a drawer, setting it up, plugging it in, all that sort of stuff. Because we use the compressor every second day. Well, just about like if we're if I've got because so we're here for four days, we're going to be driving around. I've let the airbags down yeah, in the back of the car. You know, so we're going to pump the airbags back up. They're bang out to blow out the car. Um, and the other thing we is well, we got an in deflate by Max Tracks, which is uh, a product that you can put onto your four wheels and pump up or deflate your tires all mm. at once. Because yeah, like cool. if you're out in the scrub or you're out in a really hot, the hot. Yeah. You don't want to be bending up and down and moving around all the time. Like you just you clip this thing on, you, you walk over to, time. You walk to one point and you just plug your air compressor onto it and you yeah. just pump your tires up. Because you have eight tires. And it it works a treat. Yeah. It does. Like I actually we well, got that off second hand on marketplace. It was really good. Yeah. Um things Oh cash I see cash on hand and some like gold coins and stuff like that. But Mel doesn't seem to seem to agree. I don't think we've even used the cash yet. No. But we definitely use the gold coins. Oh, well, we did the if, other day when I want to put laundry, a sticker on the William Creek wall. Yeah, but if you're doing laundry, yes. But if you're not doing laundry, you do not need... Yeah, gold. and that's actually another thing for saving money as well. If you have a washing machine in your van, or if you can put one in your van, do it because you'll save a shit ton of money being able to do your washing uh, in the van. Wash laundromats, you're looking at six dollars a load. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. And like when you're off grid for a week and you come back into power... Yeah, like I you, can do like eight loads. Yeah, we could do it. Yeah, we could do eight loads. That's, <laughs> that's right. sheets and stuff. Um, and now I'll just quickly run through things that I have found the most useful. 100% AirPods or ear pluggy, whatever they're called, that are not called an AirPod. Earplugs? Whatever to make noise go into your ears from your device. <laughs> because <laughs> you have, we have three people, imagine having like five and you're all watching something different. Yeah. No yeah. thanks you want a pair of airpods yeah or whatever um easy anchor clotheslines we'll put a link um, into the we'll put a link in the description for this thing they but are there's two above so us at the moment useful. so useful i think that's probably in the one of the top three things that we've taken on this trip they're just amazing honestly you can hook it onto anything, anything. yeah anything um i've really liked buying the washing sheets so it's a box of those it's like a sheet of washing powder like and you just throw it in your wash. They weigh nothing. You get 60 washes in a box for like $14. Yep. Amazing. And Definitely they break down those. in the small washing machine. And no drama you don't all. get clumps of washing stuff through your clothes. They're yeah. really good. And the air fryer. Need I'll, an air fryer. Yeah, you need an air fryer, 100%. All right, Dale. All right, what have I got? Um, so we got a bucket, just a 10 liter bucket and a funnel. So when we're off grid, we use the bucket to catch our hot water. So we got a, um, they call it a continuous hot water system. 
and you can buy this valve or something like that, which is like 400 bucks to put, to put it in. But we just got a bucket that we just turn on and just fill the red, fill the bucket up with hot water or with the water, the cold water. It, with the cold water till it runs hot. And then um, yeah. after the three showers, we've probably got close to six or seven yeah. liters of water. Yeah. And that's a lot when you're off grid, like That's honestly, right. It it's just otherwise lot. just going down the drain. Yeah. And then or I just, just use it for washing up or something. Then I just use the bucket to, in the funnel to put the water back in the tanks and then we just rerun it again. Yeah. Um, obviously, don't leave it in there when you're showering because it's just going to get contaminated with soap. Um, yeah, we already talked about the next one. Obviously, yeah, all my electric tools, like, make sure you have that sort of stuff. And my tool kit is just like a 200 piece or one of those travel kits that you can like, you get in the blister packs. Um, I think that's a uh, no brainer. You need to have something like that. Uh, what else have I got there? Silicon, zip ties, duct tape, and self tapping screws. Those are like, you, I've used all of them since mm. we've left. Yeah. You know? Zip ties, far out, we could invest. It's so annoying because I owned a workshop, right? And a zip tie is just a consumable item. You just you use them, you burn you burn through them. But yeah. now that I don't have the workshop and I'm having to buy zip ties, so expensive. They're like fifteen dollars a packet. It infuriates me. <laughs> but you go through them a lot. Yeah, like for instance, we um, I zip tied all the trailer plug connections and everything together before before we hit the unit data track. So yeah. when we were driving down the road, yeah. they didn't rattle loose and fall apart. Because that happens a lot and just anything like that can move it's just you throw a zip tie on it yep. and i think i mentioned something else there oh ratchet straps again i have a couple on you just you need a couple on standby like our boat loader broke which is just it's a simple yep. fix we just put it on with the ratchet strap. i just put the ratchet strap around it tighten it all up and it's good it's not yep. going to go it's anywhere a quick fix and an extension cord i never thought i'd need one but like when you're at a caravan park and you're not doing much driving i can just plug the fridge in to the van that's in the car so with not that's, again if you have that. That's, if you've got a fridge in the car, like it, you don't have to worry about having to charge the battery up in the car all the yeah. time. You just unplug the fridge and plug it into the van. Okay. Um, two water hoses, because I've already been caught out once. Mm -hmm. um, we went. To, I went to a fill point, went to fill up the water bladder in the back of the car, and I was just this much too short. Story yeah. of my life. It happens often. So, two water hoses. We, we do have two water hoses, but I only took one with me on that, that, that case. Yeah. So, I always take my two hoses with me now when I'm filling up and the bladder. And get heaps of those... Oh, you can't have enough like water connections You'll and stuff like that. You always drive off and leave it and go. Oh, 100%. And like we've, picked, we're, we're, we've lost a few, we've picked up a few, so yeah. just make sure you've got plenty of them in board. Yeah. But on that note, that comes to the last point. I think we're done. Yep. You agree? Yep. So. We've rambled on enough. We rambled on enough. I love talking. And now we've got the budget coming up for March. Make sure you like and subscribe. All right. So March done and dusted. So we have another budget rundown. Um, once again, <coughs> it's a blowout. I think we've just accepted that it's just going to be like that every month. So. I don't think so. I think we're at the end of it. Really? Yep. We'll see. Yep. We started off, okay, so the first half of this month we started off seriously like in the first two whole weeks we'd spent a total of like eight hundred dollars yeah it was ridiculous and yeah. we were like wow we can do this and then but we didn't bam, and we didn't move no i know yeah we didn't go anywhere we spent one whole week sitting at um we're Aussie. is that right yes and yeah. then a whole week sitting uh, at barker's um, rock barker's rock so yeah. and they're like 60 k's away from each other as well and that so that tells you you can do this cheaper each week, but you can't move. You can't do anything. You can't need fuel. Yeah, that's right. So if you want to get around the country at some stage, it's going to cost you the money to get around. Yeah. And unfortunately, every single month we've had something we need to repair. That's right. And we had that again this yeah. month, which I'm pretty sure we've put that in a video already. Uh, yeah, that was yeah. on the last video where we said the exhaust was stuffed. So, let's start with the rundown. So, fuel for this month was $2,210. And it's funny, we, we, we spent two weeks stationary, but this month we spent the most amount of fuel. Yeah. So, you know, we went through the Flinders, we went up through Unidata, and so it just... I it think, just got us. I think the dearest 
$3.19. It was $3.19 $3. for $95. Yeah. yeah. That's all we could get. So if you don't want to be spending money on fuel like that, don't do the Outback. 100%, that's right. But with saying that, we thought we would have spent more, I reckon, on the fuel. We didn't actually need to fill up that much. No, and look, I, I thought we were going to be needing our jerry cans. Turns out we actually didn't need to use the jerry cans, but in hindsight, it was good pre-filling them because we put it was obviously cheaper, cheaper fuel in rather yeah. than sp spending an extra forty um, three dollars nineteen liter and forty liters yeah. of fuel, you know. All right, next up, accommodation. We spent nine hundred and forty-five this month. Um, again, the first two weeks was. One Every was night free. was twenty dollars a night because it was the council parks. Well, that was where Walti was free. Yeah, it was. And then we had anyway, council pass. After who knows? That. Then we look. To be we honest, somehow got to nine hundred dollars. Building up to before we left for the Flinders. The Flinders, we um, we stayed at a couple of caravan parks and that sort of stuff, preparing ourselves to be in the scrub. Um, groceries. 1350 So we spent the most this month on groceries and I think the reason is two weeks ago we bought so many groceries yeah. to get us through the Outback sections and to be honest we could probably go another week, definite week, maybe two with a lot of the food we bought. Which we, so, which we will be doing anyway. That's right. So that's, I can Pretty much, you could say some of that's going to the next month. We just got to buy our staples, like some milk, like milk wraps, and just like the bare essential stuff yeah. like that to keep us ticking over. Um, dining out, two hundred and ninety. It's about the same. We seem to be spending that every month, so um, which isn't doing anything nice, mind you. It's. <laughs> what does that? Do that include? That includes. We just we did have to buy dinner at um, Mari Hotel, which meant our camping was free. So technically, <laughs> we could have just gone to Caravan Park and spent forty dollars instead of a hundred at the hotel. Yeah, that's right. But anyway, um, activities a measly thirteen dollars this month. Didn't I didn't. What, what was that? What was that thirteen dollars? I think it was the um, national parks thing for Flinders. Oh yes, that's what it was. Yes. So yeah. <laughs> really. Um, miscellaneous was 334 so that was dramatically lower than the last two months. Which that covers like our stickers and all that Honestly, sort of stuff? Honestly, all miscellaneous is at the moment is buying stickers and like those random things. Okay, yep. Like, yeah. I, um, I'm, I'm just as fresh to this as you guys because I've, I've got to refresh my mind every time we go through this, so. Alcohol was very low this month as well, $184. And to be honest, that was because I stocked up from last month and we haven't touched it yet. And th I think this is my fifth beer in March. Yeah, we have not had anything to do yeah, this I haven't, month. Yeah, I haven't drank anything, so. And the killer was repairs. So we had to get a new exhaust put on the car and that was $2,422. That included a wheel alignment. We had to get another wheel alignment done on the car because the first wheel alignment we had done in January was done incorrectly and where it, the rear tires have worn out on the car quicker than what they should have. It's just constant. Uh, anyway. Yeah, that's right. So our total this month was $7,748. But if we take off those repairs, it's 5,326. So Can we just take off the repairs off each month and we'll just quickly go through each month? So yeah, March was 5,326 without repairs. February was 4,831 without repairs. And then January was six grand without repairs. So, yeah. so we're sticking around those figures. Well, and we, look, we, we say this every single month, but we've always trying to add, get around that $1,200 a, mark, a week mark. And we're there. We are. If we stop having to fix things. repairs. And no. so we already know, which you wouldn't have seen yet, but we already know we have repairs coming for April. So <laughs> it's the 1st of April and we have a few repairs, but you'll see that in the next You'll video. see that in the next episode because me, I'm an idiot. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's our budget for this month and the next couple of videos coming up is going to be the Flinders Ranges, Udnadatta, and then 
Uluru. Uluru. So we have a few in the works at the moment. So we will see how expensive April is. I don't think, like, I, look, it's, oh, I don't know. I don't know. We're, we're, we're the first, we're, we're, we're the first of April and we already know we need the car serviced, which is 500 yeah. bucks. Um, I've got to repair a couple of other things, which, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, Anyways. I don't think it's going to be cheap. I don't but think anyway, um, and it is what it is. So April will be spent in the NT. Um, and looking at accommodation, it's not going to be cheap. No. If anybody's got any great places that we're not, we're not looking for free camping or anything like that because we're trying to situate ourselves in Darwin so we can travel out of this spot. But anyone's got any low, co low cost powered free camps for that they know are great, say half an hour out of Darwin, perfect. Let us know because um, we'd like to get your opinion on that. So, yeah. All right, so this is the end of this video. Um, and yes, this video has just been a lot of talking. Hopefully some people have enjoyed that. If you didn't, then just ignore this one and move on to the next. The good stuff's coming. Alrighty, we'll see you on the next one. See ya, bye.